Good afternoon, this is Brian. Today is a beautiful but quite warm January 17th, 2021. It's an early Sunday afternoon and I'm in the Santa Ana Mountains along South Main Divide Road or Killen Trail, if you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. Today, I want to present a spotlight on California native plants and my spotlight videos, you know, focus on trees, shrubs, but sometimes I'll focus on other plants like perennials. Today, I want to spotlight the sawtooth golden bush, and that's Hazardia squarosa. And where we live here, our variety is variety grandelioides. So this is Hazardia squarosa variety grandelioides. It's a sometimes quite tall perennial slash subshrub. And I want to get into a little more detail about that. But Hazardia squarosa, the sawtooth golden bush, is known by its common name sawtooth because of the very rough, very poked, very uh, pointy, prickly edges of the leaves. So this is one of the famous golden bushes. There are several types of golden bushes here in California, especially here in Southern California, and they all come from different genera. Now, first off, this plant is in the sunflower family, the Asteraceae. So it's related to sunflowers, it's related to... Uh, it's related to... California sagebrush, which is not a sage, remember, California sagebrush is not a sage. Uh, bush sunflowers, a lot of members of the Asteraceae here. It's one of the most widely represented plant families in the world, and it's extremely well represented here in Southern California. I'm about close to an elevation, roughly about 3,000 feet, maybe a little higher. And so this is one of the many types of golden bushes. We have other types of golden bushes in different genera, and they're fairly closely related roughly closely related. They're in the same groups of the sunflower family. These ones, this one is the genus I'm talking about. This is Hazardia. Then you have Isocoma, another type of golden bush. Ericamaria, which is uh, another group of golden bushes. Then I believe we still have the genus Haplopappus. I know that was one of the old catch-alls. So, sawtooth golden bush is a fairly scattered, sometimes common associate in coastal sage scrub, chaparral, woodlands, and especially disturbed areas. Especially along here on Main Divide Road, this is very disturbed soil here. So with that in mind, you're gonna have a lot of these growing along the side. A lot of these plants along the side of the road here are sawtooth golden bushes. But as you know, as you go into the the sage scrub here, and in the chaparral, the plant is a lot less common. So this plant likes to colonize disturbed areas. Forgive me for the sound, the the constant sound of cars coming by me. I am on a road. I am on the side of the road, obviously, on a very busy day. But a lot of the golden bushes, especially sawtooth. They have these flower heads, these flower inflorescences that stick way beyond the end of the stems, and then they produce these little golden flowers. They're not really, on some of some golden bushes, they're very conspicuous, they're very showy, very grand. On some of them, they're a little bit more circumspect. In other words, you really got to look at them more closely to really appreciate them. And sawtooth goldenbush is 
the ladder. This one, you've got to take the time to look at it more closely. This one still has bl blossoms on it. So these can blossom a nice chunk of the year. They typically focus on, you know, summer and fall. But there are the flowers, these little yellow discoid flowers. This is a flower head. These are multiple flowers. Sun, the sunflower family used to be known as the composite family, the compos comp compositae, meaning composite flower heads. So this is a flower head with several disc florets, disc flowers, I should say. So that right there, that little yellow bit in the center of the screen, it's hard to get it on camera really very detailed. That is a flower head. So they form these big long inflorescence panicles and you get all these what used to be flower heads. Then they turn into these little bristly parachute like seeds that blow off in the wind and f take root in other areas. I have grown this, I have several seedlings of this species at home. They are extremely easy to germinate. Like a lot of plants in the sunflower family, they're very opportunistic. And in some cases, some people might consider them weedy because they spread like wildfire. Again, the seeds, when ripe, they blow off, they find suitable place, take root, and more plants come up. All I did to get these to germinate, put the seeds in soil, and watch them germinate within a couple of days. So these are very easy plants to germinate if you're considering growing them. I mean, for the average person, might not be too interested. For the average person, this plant might not look so exuberant or showy. But for people like me, I really love our native plants. I treasure them. And I think they all have beauty and awesomeness. I just find it fascinating. I just find these plants fascinating because they're so neat. They're just so neat looking. So they range from perennials to subshrubs. In other words, later in life, they do form some level of woodiness. You can see they got kind of gray, kind of a little bit of stripiness on the bark. Light gray with some darker stripes in there, maybe some slight furrowing. With with greater age, I don't believe that these are extremely long-lived perennials or subshrubs. I don't believe that they live extremely long. But with age, you can see the stems do form some woodiness. And again. It's a very prickly plant, so if you're reaching in to touch anything, be careful. The leaves are the leaves are very prickly. But again, here are the leaves more up close. So the leaves kind of clasp along the stem. See, they you don't have a leaf stalk on these. The base of the leaf kind of clasps about at least halfway around the stem. It's kind of hard to see here. But that's what these leaves kind of do. They kind of clasp around the stem. A lot of sunflower family plants do that. But a sawtooth golden bush is one that does it very noticeably. And then the leaves become more fascicled and have little side, uh, little, little side shoots here, higher up on the stem, before you get to the panicles of the inflorescence. So again, the sawtooth golden bush. To a lot of people who are not people who appreciate plants, but are not super passionate, this might not be something that that person would be jumping over hoops to grow or to even to look at. Because to the untrained eye, it is a quote unquote plain looking plant. But for those who are very interested in native plants, you can't go wrong with a plant. It's seemingly very easy to grow. And like I said, if you look closely, the flowers, the flowers are kind of neat, they're kind of pretty. Again, it's hard to get a really good detailed look. Maybe here's one in the sun. 
Very pretty. Pretty. The sawtooth golden bush. Again, for its entire range, that I don't know, but it's very, but it is found here throughout Southern California. I've seen it in Orange County, San Diego County. I've seen it in Riverside. We're trying right now. LA County, I've seen it. I imagine it probably grows in parts of San Bernardino County, but I will, in the description, post the uh, approximate range of this plant. Come up here to the Santa Ana Mountains, especially on the side of the road, you'll find these plants quite a bit. And then again, you'll find them sometimes in openings and disturbed sites in chaparral, sage scrub, and sometimes uh, in oak woodland. Sometimes you'll find them in woodlands and you know where you get more access to sun. These plants are adapted to very dry conditions. They grow where it's dry for several months of the year. And since they're growing near the asphalt here, they also can tolerate quite a bit of heat. Because this area gets very hot because of the 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 sun. So these plants are very drought tolerant and what they do is during the dry season, right now we're finally we're entering the rainy season. It's been a very dry rainy season so far. These plants will green up a little bit more during the rainy season. During the summer and fall, they can look very sparse. But they do they do leaf out. See, you can tell right here, these are last year's leaves, and you can tell that they're kind of rough and dehydrated, but you can see new growth coming out here. You see this right here where my thumb is, my, not my thumb, my middle finger is kind of tapping it. That's new growth right there. It's lighter green, a little softer, a little more luxuriant, but it's not a very, very densely leafed bush. It's not a densely leafed shrub. That's one thing you got to realize. So you're not going to have a really thick hedge if you grow a bunch of these in a line. But like I said, if you're really into California native plants, like I am, I think the world of it. I pretty much think that about any any plant I see, any or all of our native plants. I think I think the world of them. I really am passionate, and I honestly I think this is a beautiful plant. That's just me. I hope you do too, and I hope you get to know the sawtooth golden bush, Hazardia squarosa, variety Grindelioides. This was Brian's spotlight on plants. I hope you found this video interesting. And that's what the seeds look like. These little fuzzy things, those are the seeds. Those are what break off and uh, germinate everywhere. So, on that note, it was Brian's spotlight on plants. I hope you found this one entertaining and interesting. And I hope it gives you a, per, uh, a new perspective of a California native plant that doesn't seem to get a lot of love. Because to some people it looks like a, a roadside weed. But it is very much a native plant. And it's paramount in establishing and disturbed areas. So that was it. Spotlight on uh, spotlight on plants. Hope you enjoyed it. Check out Hazardia squarosa of Reddy Grindelioides. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next episode of Spotlight on Plants. Thanks for watching.